Hello everyone, welcome to Princeton High School. I'm Christina Donovan. I am the Supervisor of School Counseling for Princeton Public Schools. It's a pleasure to welcome you to Princeton High School. If this is your first time, I do hope that you take the opportunity to get to know the building, have a look at some upcoming events, and please join us. This should be your home as well as your students' home. And for those that are returning, then I hope we have some exciting new programming that we can discuss. And again, you know how much we welcome you into our Princeton High School community. So the goal for this evening is to discuss the program of studies. Uh, the program of studies has been published. It is available on our website. As I noted before, on Friday, we will post this entire presentation as well. If you have any questions or concerns, you will have upcoming appointments with your school counselor where you can discuss this. The program of studies really has everything that's available at Princeton High School. It lists graduation requirements, it lists all of our courses. I joke that it reads like a college catalog with some of the incredible classes that are available here at Princeton High School. Uh, it has course descriptions and the prerequisites that go along with it. So we're going to talk a little bit about our course selection process, overview of the graduation requirements, and then we'll have content area information from our supervisors. So some important people that I'd like to introduce you to. Um, Jessica Baxter is here. She is our building principal. We have our assistant principals, Ms. Ciso Stentz, Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Warren. I'd also like to say hello and thank you to Jason Burr, JW's own principal, who has joined us this evening in support of his saying goodbye, I guess, to his eighth grade students as they become our students. Not, no, not yet. We also have our supervisor, Stephanie Greenberg, who is our supervisor of English and Social Studies. Uh, Stephanie Tidwell, who is not able to join us this evening, but is our supervisor of Mathematics and Business. Marujala Baja, who also was not able to join us this evening. Um, but Bob Corral, the known and beloved chemistry teacher here at Princeton High School, is taking her place this evening. Uh, Ms. Priscilla Russell is here for World Languages and ESL. Crystal Riddick, our special education supervisor. Uh, Brian Dubinsky, unfortunately, isn't able to make it. He is in charge of PE Health and Director of Athletics. Mr. Lenahan is here joining us, Visual and Performing Arts. And then, of course, myself, which is in charge of School Counseling. So this is a ton of names, and tonight is a ton of information. I don't expect that you're going to memorize everything. It's why we record it. It's the reason we have a written copy of the Program of Studies. It's the reason you have this introductory meeting, and then you have subsequent meetings with your counselors. So I really just invite you to kind of Relax, listen, try to take in as much as you can, and maybe formulate some questions for when you have your one-on-one -on -one appointments. The school counseling department, I call them, uh, they're like the multi-tool, so they can help students with course selection, uh, discussing a teacher. I'm sorry parents, but if your child is a little upset with you, they're a really good resource to come talk to. Conflicts in school, they're kind of the multi-tool of the school, um, both at JW and at the high school. So that's going to become somebody you're really going to want to get to know. Uh, the counselors are broken down by alphabet. That will be uh, provided to you. The final list goes out in June once we have all of our enrollment numbers, but you will have a preliminary idea when you meet with your counselors at your uh, individual appointments. We also have a wonderful child study team if your child receives special education services. And the child study team and the school counselors work together to ensure that the academic, social, and emotional needs of your children are met here at our school. We have a wonderful college advisor, Ms. Lieberman. We have our Dean of Students, Ms. Ligas, who the rising ninth graders will get to know really, really well as she's in charge of our transition program to Princeton High School. Uh, myself and Ms. Ligas were at the middle schools uh, earlier this week and last week presenting to the eighth grade students themselves. So that was kind of their introduction to Princeton High School. We then have a SAC, who's also our peer group coordinator, Ms. Michelle Samborski. And then Dr. Dynan is in charge of our idea center, which I always rave about. And any of the students that are in the room that heard me present, I talk about the fact that Princeton High School has free tutoring available to students right here in the school day, which I think is an incredible opportunity. Uh, whether you just need some extra revision with some work, or if you're really struggling in a subject, there is help available to you here at school. Dr. Dynan's in charge of that program. In addition, she is in charge of our community service programming, uh, which really is more of a 10th grade um, conversation, so don't worry, you don't have to know about that yet. 
If you are new to the district and you're joining us this evening, welcome. Thank you for choosing Princeton High School. Um, I would tell you that if I could go to any high school, I probably wouldn't go back to high school, but if I could go back to high school, I would pick this school. So I think you made a great choice. Make sure that you call our PHS registrar, Ms. Scala, to schedule an appointment, and the appointments will be scheduled after spring break. It does not affect your ability to attend school or pick your classes. It's just a timing that we need to register our current eighth grade students, so it doesn't affect the students in any way. Okay, Princeton High School, the daily schedule. So something that I'll tell the students, and I'm definitely going to tell you guys, is that 8.20 a.m. is the start time, which is amazing. I'm sure you've been seeing in the news about later start times and all of the health benefits and social emotional benefits to having that later start time. So I'm very proud to say that with the work of Ms. Baxter um, and the board and our uh, central administration, they did move the start time to 8.20 a.m. Uh, two years ago. Uh, so this is a wonderful opportunity for our students. But the other piece means school starts at 8.20 a.m. So there's not a homeroom every single day. It's not time to go to the snack machine and grab a coffee. Class actually starts at 8.20. So it's really important that students understand that transition from middle school. We have a rotating schedule. So that means our periods rotate the morning and the afternoon, which is a great opportunity for a couple of different reasons. So I think about this for our students who perhaps um, have difficulty maybe first thing in the morning and first period is tough for them because they're tired and let's say they used to have math first period maybe that's a difficult subject in a traditional school schedule that student all school year would have math first period every day whereas here at Princeton High School they're rotating so on the first day it's first period the second day it's second period then it's third period then it's fourth period so it really helps students from that aspect in addition, we have a ton of student athletes here, and with the historic um, athletic schedule, it would be very difficult if you played a sport. You may miss seventh and eighth period, and depending on your game schedule, that might have been a couple days a week. Now those periods are rotating, so you're not missing the same class every single day. And that, again, is a great benefit to our students. So those are our four eight period days, um, because as you can see, I'm gonna talk about cycle days. So part of our rotating schedule is we also have two days where there's longer periods, which really helps for deeper learning, more engaging experiences for our students. Uh, and those days only have four periods, which is also great because students, that means you only have four periods of homework on that day. We also have something called break. So when I first was hired by Princeton High School about 10 years ago, I was told that all 1,600 students have lunch at the same time. I was terrified. It might be the absolute greatest part of Princeton High School. For students, you might not have a single class with somebody that you're friends with, but every single day you have a period of time that you can spend with your friend group. In addition to that, it's a wonderful time where the school is on break, so teachers are available, counselors are available, administration is always out in the hallways, supervisors are in the building. It allows students during the school day to really get what they need, whether that is sitting with their friends or playing frisbee on the front lawn, or if it's talking to a math teacher about a quiz that didn't go so well. So it really is a benefit. We talk a lot about high school being a responsibility. So we feel that our students are responsible and they have met us with that as well. And because of that, we really are able to have break uh, for all of our students. Okay. So this seems like it's a long <coughs> way off, but I blinked and my daughter was in seventh grade. And you probably feel the same way sitting here right now. So these are the graduation requirements as they currently stand. So for graduation, what you really need to know is that students need English, they need US history, world history, three classes of mathematics, 15 credits, which is three in science. They need PE and health every year that they're in school. Uh, one year of world languages, but we recommend at least three, and our world languages supervisor will discuss that more. Five credits, which is one full year in visual and performing arts, and one full year in 21st century life and careers, and then 2.5 credits in financial literacy. So that sounds like a lot of requirements for graduation. It's, in total, it's 120 credits, but most students that take a full schedule are taking 40 credits a year. So when you think about that, there's still a lot of flexibility. But that's where it's important to really think kind of like a backward design when you're designing your schedule. Look through that program of studies and say to yourself as a student or as a parent, have this conversation with your child, what are some classes that you know you really, really want to take at Princeton High School? 
That way you can have a look and see what are the courses that are required beforehand, what are the classes I actually need for graduation, and how can I fit it all in. I can tell you that many of my conversations with seniors, um, I was a school counselor myself here for many years, they would say to me their one regret was that there weren't enough periods in the day to take all the classes they really wanted to take here. So that's why I think it's so important to take a look at that four-year span and really think about what are some of the really exciting learning opportunities that you could have, whether it's philosophy, or if it's the new game design course that's coming out, or if it's your science and you just love that AP chemistry class with Dr. Carell. You want to make sure that you're looking at all of the requirements and meeting those. And your school counselor, again, that multi-tool is there to help you every year. They're going to review the courses that you sign up for, they're going to let you know what you still need for graduation, and they can help you manage that so that you really can have an engaging learning experience here at Princeton High School. I want you to graduate and I want you to say, I took every class I wanted to at Princeton High School and it was wonderful. In addition to that, we have some, I call them bonus programs. We have our peer group program, which is the um, really relevant one for our ninth grade students. It's where we have peer group leaders that will meet with your group of students every six days on the cycle. And the nice thing is it's a small group of students that aren't necessarily from your home uh, eighth grade school. Meaning we mix Cranberry with charter school with JW students, and they go through a variety of different activities to really bond you as a class, to help you with the school norm, the school um, culture and climate, and to really have you feel when you're ready to move into 10th grade uh, that you are a true Princeton High School student. Testing. This is usually where I get booed. Um, and JSLA is the testing. Testing is in April. And I took a direct quote from the Department of Education because most of your students are going to graduate in 2024, I think, right? Um, so the Department of Ed is committed to providing fair notice to students and educators and will continue to collaborate with stakeholders to transition to the next generation of statewide assessments for the class of 2023 and beyond. So what that translates to, I don't even need the app for this, is don't worry about it, we'll take care of it, we'll make sure that your child meets whatever state testing requirements there are. We always put in different programming, remediation, tutoring, whatever we need to do to ensure that our students meet that requirement. So see this slide and we'll just move on. All right, the typical freshman schedule. So students take English 1, US 1, and physical education and freshman health. You then receive placements for certain other aspects. So that includes your science placement, your mathematics placement, your world language placement, and then you can take two electives. <coughs> so within our schedule, we have full year classes, so they run all year, and then we also have semester. So the semester, you can take up to four semester classes, you can take one full year and two semester classes, you can to full year, um, and we also allow students to take um, a foreign language as an elective course as well. So if you, and I don't mean to steal your thunder, but if you are in French right now and you have always wanted to take Japanese, you can choose that as an elective. So it's a really nice option for our students. The other thing that Princeton High School offers are free periods. So students are required to take 30 credits which is essentially six classes as the absolute minimum. Most of our students take seven to eight classes, but it's really important to think about balance in your life. Um, and we're working on a new time management tool that will be provided to you where you can sit down and clock all the hours in a student's day. Everything from the required amount of sleep, how much time it takes to eat, shower, downtime, which is really important, family time, and then your extracurricular activities, your sports, and your homework. So all students will receive a listing of the anticipated um, homework times for classes. It's really, really, really crucial to go through that so that you are happy and healthy and eating and sleeping and learning at the same time. So that's a wonderful new tool that will come. If when doing that, many students will think about their hours in the day and they benefit from a free period. So that's available to all students starting in ninth grade. And I always get asked this question, yes, you can take a free period every single year in high school, still meet the graduation requirements and still meet 120 credits. So that's really important to know when you're thinking about that balance. Teacher recommendations, grades, and performance determine class placements. 
So I always put this in. It's really early. It is only January. There is still plenty of time left. So if your child receives a placement that they're not very happy with, talk to the teacher, ask what do I need to do to meet whatever that expectation is because there's still five months left in the year and we do review everything again in June and that's where the placements change. And then vice versa. If your child has been recommended for, let's say, an advanced or accelerated class, and it's really not their interest or their passion, it is totally okay to not take that class and to really focus on the areas that you're excited about and that will engage you and engage a lifelong uh, love of learning. So I keep saying this, balance, balance, balance. But it's really, really important. Um, time magically evaporates for many of our students. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're thinking about those and thinking about those decisions that we're making, especially if you're like a three athlete student or if you have a big community service or maybe you babysit your younger sibling. So all these sort of things you want to take into account. Um, when you're thinking about what your courses are and really how you want to live your lives. Because again, we want you to be happy, we want you to be healthy, and we also want you to love learning. The last thing that anybody would want is for you to take so many classes and be so stressed out that you're not enjoying high school you know, by junior year. You have four years, um, try to make the most of it and make some really good decisions. And parents, we need your help with that. And this is why I'm saying you need to think about balance, because we have over 120 clubs that run at Princeton High School. This has always been one of my favorite parts, because they have everything from the meat club that gets together and girls meet, sorry for the vegetarians in the room, uh, then they also have clubs that are a little bit more time intensive, like yearbook, uh, the tower, my personal favorite that I used to run, Spork, it's the culinary magazine, the best culinary magazine, definitely sign up for it. We have a club fair about the third week of school where all of the rising ninth grade students will be invited down to look at all the different clubs. What I tell all students, and I'll encourage you as well, tell your child, sign up for anything that they are interested in and go to at least one meeting. See if it's something that you're really passionate about. If you're not, you don't have to go back. They are not going to find you in the hallway and say, why didn't you come to the second meeting? So it is worth taking that one leap of faith and trying it out and seeing what you think. Um, you'd be amazed, like you might connect with somebody that you would never normally see, that they wouldn't be in your classes, or maybe they're an upperclassman, and you can make some really good connections through that. Uh, so I think it's a wonderful opportunity. The other thing is, and we kind of joke about this, if we don't have a club and there's something you want, it's actually really easy, which is why we have over 120 clubs, to start a club yourself. So if you want to start the Harry Potter fan club or the, I don't know, you know, Pokemon Go uh, fan club, you can do that. You just need five of your friends and an advisor. And most teachers, coaches, counselors will have the, uh, be happy to advise you in that. So again, if you don't see something that you're really interested in and it's something you've always wanted to do, we have a pathway for you to do that. So again, we talk about like how school is more than just academics, it's really a community. I started this by presentation by saying, we invite you in, please be part of our community, come to the events. Uh, something Ms. Ligas and I always say is, and also don't forget to visit your neighbors. If you don't play soccer, still go see your buddy who does play soccer. You don't play the violin, there's a great orchestra concert coming out, go check it out. It's just really good to support your community, and that's really what Princeton High School is all about, supporting one another and really being engaged in all these different aspects. So some other programs that are available, and I do want to caution that some of the dates for some of these programs are very, very soon. Uh, but there is a Health Science Academy through Mercer County, there is a STEM Academy, and there's also the Academy of Culinary Arts. So those are your traditional like vocational programs that are available to students. You would want to see your 8th grade counselor to discuss um, your application. But again, Princeton High School is the best high school in the entire world, so I really think you should come here. <laughs> So once you do come here, there is also programs where we can share some time with you. So like Mr. Burr didn't want to share the eighth graders with me just yet, I don't want to share you guys just yet either. So there are some programs that are available in 11th grade. It's for juniors and seniors, everything from like 
auto, which is what I think people think of when they think of vocational programs, but there's health sciences, there's music technology, there's some really exciting, um, very innovative programming that's available. The other thing that Mercer County always reminds me is that it's a myth that if you go to technical school, it means you're not going to go to college. 90% um, of their shared time students continued their education after high school. So it is not um, a be-all, end-all pathway. It just opens up some different opportunities if there's an area of passion that you have. Another program that is available, um, typically for our seniors, is Princeton University's high school program. In order to qualify for that, there are uh, very strict guidelines, and I do want to caution that Princeton University does um, have the right to change those prerequisites. Uh, but the most important thing is that you would need to exhaust the curriculum at Princeton High School, meaning you would need to take all of the courses in a given area, and then Princeton University has been kind enough to say, okay, you've taken everything that Princeton High School has, then we're going to open this up to you. So advancing courses is another option. Uh, there is an approval process in place with deadlines. The applications will go up in the early spring for most programs. Um, there are summer programs that we have available. Some more information will come regarding that. There will be programs available at Princeton High School. There's also other ways uh, to demonstrate proficiency where you would be able to advance in a course. Um, it's really important to make sure that you're having these discussions with your classroom teachers and department supervisors. We want you making good choices. Your placements that are determined are for your success. It's not that people are trying to hold you back or even push you too far forward. They really just want a good fit for you so that you'll be successful here at Princeton High School. So they'll look at the history, performance, interest, and plans, which is huge, too. If you have no interest in math, why would you skip math? Just take math at Princeton High School. So we really want to think holistically about what are your future goals and aspirations, and then how can we really make this experience here at Princeton High School meet those so that you'll have the best opportunity to be successful going forward. So there are a ton of electives in each department. I've been talking about the clubs. I threw out a couple of the cool electives. Definitely take some time to go through the program of studies. And like I said, have an eye towards all the classes that you really want to take. It's really important to highlight those now so that you can think about where you're meeting the graduation requirements. We have a wonderful three-year research course as well. That's something that would be open to your students when they enter 10th grade. Um, we have a senior project option, which when I talk about passion projects, it's incredible what some of our students do. And that's where they really design their own project. They work with community members. They work here with administration at the school. Um, and then typically they'll do like a gallery walk or some sort of presentation. It's incredible some of the senior projects that come out of Princeton High School. And there's always more. So now I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to turn it over to our department supervisors um, to present on their individual programming. So right now I'm going to introduce Ms. Greenberg. Hello everyone. Um, I am Steph Greenberg. I'm the supervisor of humanities here, which uh, means the English and Social Studies departments are under my purview. Um, if you are already feeling overwhelmed and your head is spinning, I have excellent news for you. You have virtually no decisions to make regarding English and social studies in your freshman year at Princeton High School. So, um, all freshmen here take English 1. All sophomores take English 2. When you get to junior year, you'll have a decision to make in consultation with your teacher about whether you choose to continue with English 3 or whether you decide to enroll in AP in English 3. You'll have the same decision to make your senior year about English 4 or AP 4. Um, the only possible decision that you might need to be making right now uh, is whether or not you're going to accept a recommendation to sign up for a plus class. Um, so English 1 and English 2 both have PLUS classes that are offered. Um, they give supplemental support to students who um, we believe may need that support to be successful in their English 1 or English 2 class. Um, if you're recommended, we encourage you to take advantage of the opportunity, particularly your freshman year when that transition from middle school to high school can be a little bit, a little bit challenging. Uh, we have wonderful electives available in the English department. We have a sampling up here behind me. Everything from creative writing to public speaking classes. Um, the ones that have an asterisk after them are the electives that are open to freshmen. Uh, we have a lot of freshmen that enroll in English electives. Um, I want to put a particular plug in for a journalism class for freshmen. 
Um, it's a wonderful class that in addition to giving supplemental writing instruction that can be really useful throughout high school, um, also opens up opportunities for students to, to write for the Tower and for the Spork magazine and for all of our different uh, publications at the high school. Uh, you heard quickly, we do have a new elective running this year, which is game design. Um, unfortunately, not open to freshmen. Right now, we're just saying 10th through 12th grade. Um, but we will work out all the kinks, and then you guys can sign up for it your sophomore year. <sighs> Heading over to the social studies department. Once again, very little decision making that you need to do. All freshmen take U.S. History 1 here at Princeton High School. Uh, come 10th grade, you'll need to make a decision between either taking U.S. History 2 or enrolling in AP U.S. History. Junior year is World History or AP World History. Um, and then senior year, you'll have lots of options. You can sign up for AP European History or AP Government and Politics or again, many, many electives that are available in social studies. We have these wonderful regional electives. If you have a particular interest in learning about, say, the Middle East or Africa, then you can sign up for classes that focus on those regions specifically. We have a wonderful racial literacy class that explores issues of race and culture in America. Uh, human behavior and accelerated sociology are both full year electives that really delve into the social sciences. Uh, wonderful teachers and wonderful opportunities across the board. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I just discussed, feel free to, to drop me an email. Um, Stephanie.Greenberg at PrincetonK12.org, which is the, the general formula for all email addresses in the school. Um, and I wish you much luck in your transition to high school. was unable to join us this evening, so I am going to do my best. I'm going to start the presentation by saying I am not a math supervisor. Uh, however, she provided me with wonderful notes, and she is open to any conversations that you have related to math placements, etc. So freshmen entering PHS from another school district or private school will typically take Algebra 1 as their first year math course. For current 8th grade students, that's where I said that placement will come into effect. Most students entering Princeton High School take geometry, that, uh, or geometry accelerated. Now again, I want to reiterate that if you are not happy with your placement, you still have plenty of opportunity to have those conversations with your teachers, but their placement decisions are really to help you be successful here at Princeton High School. The high school is also committed to making sure that students are successful when they're here. So as Ms. Greenberg said, we do have plus classes available. So you may receive a recommendation of a plus class, and that's something you can discuss with your child's teacher to see if that would be a good fit for them to be successful once they're here at the high school. So currently our rising ninth grade classes are not, ninth grade students, sorry, are not able to take math classes concurrently um, because math typically builds upon itself. So it doesn't make sense to take Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus at the same time because you need one in order to progress to the next one. So that's something that's important to know going into the high school. This is the standard math and computer science course sequence. So again, you can see that most students start in geometry. And again, your eighth grade placement is kind of what determines your next placement here at Princeton High School. And as you can see, most of our students are able to take calculus by the time that they graduate. And again, this will be on our website for everyone who's taking pictures. So when you are looking at that course sequence matrix, that's your typical progression. But let's say you're coming from a different school district, or maybe you're here this evening and you're entering at a higher grade level, not at ninth grade, you definitely want to have a conversation with your school counselor to ensure that you're on the right track to meet all of those requirements for graduation. Okay? So we do have exceptions in place for students that are entering 11th or 12th grade that really need their transcript evaluated to see what math classes they've actually um, met the requirement for. Many um, classes classes in Europe, etc., are integrated math, and so those become a little bit more complicated. So again, if you're a new family and you're entering into our district, make sure that you have that conversation with your school counselor. So for computer science, the department offers two full-year computer science course options, which is Python programming and computer science principles. 
So the Python is strictly programming. Uh, they're using the Python language, and that, again, is typically a freshman level course. And then Computer Science Principles is a survey class that kind of um, discusses all the data representations, now I'm reading wireless networking, the impact of technology, and then has 50% coding and programming. So what I like about Computer Science Principles, and I told a lot of freshmen this year if they didn't receive Python, that they really should try the Computer Science uh, class because it gives them an overview. And then they can see if there's a passion for that. Um, and that's something that is available to freshmen. So if you're not sure that you're interested in programming, then that might be the better choice as an elective. Um, if you are hardcore, you're on the JW robotics and coding team, then you might want to sign up for Python. And then the last thing that I want to be clear, the math department says we are really excited about you joining us. And again, the current recommend recommendations are just initial placements that will be reviewed. So I think that's super, super important. Yes, your child will receive a recommendation in a couple of weeks, but yes, there's also five months left in the year. So it's really, really important to stay committed. And I also tell our students this, your recommendation and placement can go up, can also go down. It's the same thing I tell my seniors when they get into college. That's awesome. You got into college, you still have six months left of high school. So kind of think of it that way. And now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Corral for science. So this morning, Dr. Donovan sent me an email and asked me, am I ready? Keep it short and sweet. And I told her, yeah, I had my 42 doctoral dissertation slides ready to go. Um, but no, really, these are my notes. Um, why am I here? But Mrs. Bajesh, who is the science supervisor, told me she was going to be out of town and asked me to do it. And I didn't learn the lesson that I was trying, somebody tried to teach me in my freshman year is, what does Navy stand for? Never again volunteer yourself. So, what we are trying to do in the science department is bring e inquiry and hands-on learning to the forefront of everything that we're doing. We try to do as much hands-on lessons as we can as, uh, because we find it increases deeper understanding and more long-term learning for the students. Is this one next? Yeah, okay. We want their experience to be thought-provoking, challenging. We want it to be relevant and we want it to be hands-on. We're going to use as much technology as we can. Um, we have things outside of the class, like the Science Olympiad team. If your kid is into science and competition, the Science Olympiad team, something that starts in September, regionals are in January, and the finals are in March. Um, we've done fairly well in the state, but we haven't made nationals in a long time. We also have the Science Bowl team, which has gone to nationals a couple of times. So those are a couple of opportunities for the students. In terms of course offerings, we expect our kids to take the core of biology, chemistry, and physics. Why do we expect them to take physics? Because only 19% of the kids applying to college in the country, the latest statistics, have taken physics. And especially if your kid is planning on going into science or engineering in college, take physics in high school. I will tell you, if I didn't take physics in high school, I would have had my butt kicked in college. Okay? Um, but beyond that, we have lots of different electives at the upper end. Um, chemistry will culminate with organic chemistry. And as Dr. Duffington said, if you want to take chemistry at the university, you have to take all our chemistry courses first. Um, the thing that I'm sure that everybody thinks about is the AP courses. You'll get there. Don't, make, don't worry about what AP course you're going to take, because your child may decide they love biology and they want to take AP bio. That was my child. Right? My child never took AP chemistry in high school. He loved AP bio, so he took AP bio. Follow your passion, not what you think you should uh, take for your college application. Finally, where does your kid end up? There's one of three places in freshman year, Bio 1, Accelerated Bio, and Intro Engineering and Exercise Science. Intro Engineering and Exercise Science, a brand new course this year, is very exciting. It's much more hands-on than a traditional course. It's really designed for the kid who is not quite ready for a Bio 1. Bio 1 is a very vocabulary intensive course. Also, maybe your kid is not quite as strong in math, and maybe they need an extra year before they get to chemistry, because chemistry is a very math intensive course. We use placement tests. Um, consistent academic achievement is uh, grade 7 and 8, in both science, English, and math. And finally, a uh, series of markers of uh, future success that we use uh, to evaluate the students. 
Uh, like uh, everybody's been saying, there's always a chance for review on those recommendations. These recommendations that your child is getting right now are not final, they'll be reviews, reviewed in April, um, May, sometime in there. Please consider, before you push your kid into a class that's harder, what their whole year is going to be like. Is your kid playing an uh, instrument? Are they with the studio band or the jazz ensemble just practicing for three hours tonight right behind us every Wednesday night? What are their sports commitments? Are they playing travel sports? And is that another two to three, four hours a week commitment? Try to balance their lives. I will tell you, I am an example right here. I took a regular bio my sophomore year in high school, and I have a PhD in biochemistry. What you take in your freshman and sophomore year does not determine where you end up. Okay? Hi, I'm Michelle Russell. I'm the World Languages Supervisor. Um, yes, I'm the World Languages Supervisor at ESL, the bilingual, and the Dual Language Immersion Program supervisor also. Um, so, and, well, as opposed to English and social studies where you have no choice, in world language you start ninth grade with lots of choices. Um, because as you see, we offer six languages at the high school, and um, let, most of them go from level one up through AP. French, we start at level two, and People have never had French and they want to start French, we figure out how to do that. And Latin, we don't offer an AP course in Latin, but students who want to pursue the AP work uh, with our teachers. Um, so, Dr. Donovan and uh, several others have already touched on many aspects of um, what it is to take foreign language or world language at the high school or what the requirements are. So I will just synthesize a few of them. But first you see that the state in its infinite wisdom has a one year requirement for world language and you don't develop very much proficiency in one year. So that's why you've heard a couple of times that we recommend uh, three years, uh, four years, um, or many students take uh, two languages. In fact, we've got kids coming up from JW who are coming with the two languages, with Mandarin and either French or Spanish. Um, I want you to know that I spent all yesterday at Witherspoon talking with every eighth grader. I was there for five different periods and they all came through to talk about world languages and I brought uh, quite a few students from the high school um, over to talk with, uh, with your students about the offerings that we have and uh, the students were talking about the exchanges we have and the, the clubs and competitions and all sorts of things. And the fact that their homework is not, um, not very heavy in world languages. They tried to emphasize that yesterday. But there were two important and serious things that I had talked to your kids about. And um, one was about the recommendation that all students who are in eighth grade in, at JW, at Charter, um, and in Cranberry re receive from their teacher. And again, as you've heard maybe three times already, these recommendations are being made now, and if a student isn't happy with the recommendation, there's five months to make a difference. And I explained that very carefully yesterday, and I also said, as you've heard, it could work the other way. If you've got a recommendation for a language, and you're real happy with it, and it's a high one, and you think, hmm, I've made it, I don't have to do anything, then you'll have sadness um, in May when we revisit these recommendations. Um, see, we also want to say that the beginning levels of language are open to 
all students who have no proficiency in that language. We, we welcome everybody into our language classes. The other important thing that I told your students uh, yesterday was that if they have proficiency in, you see it up here, Latin, Mandarin, Japanese, or Italian, so if, if it's a language you speak at home, if they've been studying this language for a number of years, and they wish to study it at Princeton High School, um, you need to contact me via email very soon, as it says, uh, and I will set up an evaluation for your student with the appropriate teacher. And I know that by the time I get home tonight, I'll have several uh, emails already uh, from you, and that's just fine, that's terrific. Um, so, it, and if um, your student, for instance, is taking Spanish at um, Charter, Cranberry, or John Witherspoon, and also has French proficiency, then they should talk with the French teacher at um, an eighth grade and get a recommendation from them. I follow the recommendations. We follow them in world language. We don't change uh, a student's recommendation. So that's why they're very important and very thoughtful um, to be made. Um, we say students, we welcome students who would like to take two languages. It's very possible. You heard how one, one of the electives in uh, ninth grade can be a second language. And again, that comes into play, especially with our students who are coming up from the middle school with um, Mandarin and French or Spanish. Um, and See, we talked a little bit about uh, the university. So we, every year we do have a number of students who go to the university. They will have finished the sequence of courses in, um, in a language, have taken the SAT or the AP and earned a five or a very high score on the, um, on the SAT. And then they have the opportunity to go to the university and either continue with that language or often kids start a different one. So if they've had Spanish all along, then they, uh, we've had several start Portuguese, or if they're doing Latin, they start Greek. So there are lots of opportunities for that. Uh, I'd like to address uh, parents who have students in the, who are English language learners. Um, at the end of this year, your, uh, your child's um, ESL teacher will be talking with the guidance counselors. We have um, very good offerings, solid offerings for our English language learners. And um, I'm happy to say that the new course in science is um, targeted for English language learners uh, among other groups. And we have math courses in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry for um, English language learners, co-taught English classes, writing workshop, and then transitional social studies um, courses, US 1 and 2, and world languages. So we have many offerings and a lot of support here for the students um, at Princeton High School. So thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Pat Lenahan. I'm the Supervisor of Visual and Performing Arts for the School District. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to Princeton High School. Um, and we really do have one of the most highly regarded arts programs in the state, and some would say in the country. We have truly outstanding teachers who push students to their maximum potential. And we see evidence of this every day in our classrooms, and you'll see evidence of this in our art exhibitions and performances throughout the year. And for this reason, students tend to take more than the state minimum of five credits. Uh, it is possible to take um, multiple arts classes in a given year and to uh, repeat some of our courses from year to year. Uh, students sometimes ask, you know, the, the program of studies is so overwhelming, there's so many great courses to choose from. Uh, and students ask, can I take 
fire is meant to be and can I take art and computer science? And, and the answer is yes, you can take all of them, but you can't do it all in the first year, first semester of freshman year, okay? So um, it is something that we, we do encourage people to make good educated choices, and uh, if you have choices, uh, if you have questions about the choices that you're gonna make, please reach out to your current teachers uh, in the arts programs at your middle school, or feel free to reach out to me, I'll be happy to guide you through that process. We're really proud that there is a place for every student in every one of our programs. Um, in every discipline, there's an introductory level course. It's not necessarily an easy course, but it is a course that will meet students at their level and help them move to the next. Uh, when we talk about visual art, um, we ask all students new to our program to take Studio Art 1. This is a comprehensive course in both two-dimensional and three-dimensional art and it allows students to master those fundamentals in a variety of different mediums, some of which they may have some experience in, and some of which they don't. Uh, we find that it has been a great course to really push students uh, forward, and uh, those students that choose to continue on in studio art have a really great foundation on which to build. Uh, we do uh, stress a sequence uh, in our visual art program, and this sequence of skills, techniques, and advanced conceptual ideas um, really help the students to move forward. And one of the major changes that students experience when they come to the high school is that it is a, uh, our art courses are a full year course, and our full year courses can be meet every day. Um, there is that sequence of critical skills, and we don't permit jumping of levels. Um, so, but we do uh, ask our teachers to meet every student at their own individual level and challenge them uh, to their maximum potential each and every day and every year. Uh, we do begin the portfolio preparation process for those students who are interested in art school in the Studio 2 level course uh, during the sophomore year. Um, and that college portfolio prep uh, process is also applicable for students who are submitting a uh, uh, supplemental portfolio um, if, that some of the colleges do uh, ask for. In our music program, we have courses in band, orchestra, and choir, and there are usually questions that arise about auditions. Um, so let me go through these programs one at a time. For our band program, we do require a placement audition for every student who is currently enrolled in a band program, uh, whether that be at John Witherspoon, uh, at Charter, or at Cranberry, or one of our um, uh, private schools. Um, we do ask that all of those band students complete a placement audition so that if they change their mind later on down the road, we do have that uh, data on which to uh, place the student in the appropriate class. Uh, if you are a student at John Witherspoon Charter or Cranberry, the band directors from the high school will be visiting those schools over the next uh, month or so, and they'll set up uh, audition times uh, in, in the school day, and um, if you are from another school, a private school, uh, coming to Princeton for the first time, um, you can reach out directly to Mr. Bon Jovi, uh, Joe, uh, Joseph Bon Jovi at PrincetonK12.org, and he'll set up a, a private audition time for you. Uh, because of the exceptional quality of the program, they, there is a lot of competition for these ensembles. But please be assured that you will be placed fairly, um, and your placement will give you the most appropriate experience so you continue to uh, improve. For the orchestra program, there are two ensembles that are available for freshmen. Uh, we have Repertoire Orchestra and Sinfonia. Uh, there is no uh, uh, prerequisite or audition for Repertoire Orchestra, but you do need to audition for Sinfonia. The audition process looks a little bit different for the orchestra program. If you are interested in uh, auditioning for Sinfonia, please reach out directly to Mr. Lauren at Robert Lauren at PrincetonK12.org to schedule a private audition. For the choral program, there are two options for freshmen, Chorale 1 and Chorale 2. Chorale 1 is for our sopranos and altos, and Chorale 2 is for our tenors and basses. Uh, there is no audition for either ensemble, so all you have to do is just sign up for that class. Really fabulous program. In our theater arts program, uh, freshmen are eligible to sign up for the Drama 1 course. There is no audition required for that course either. 
Um, each of our drama classes does have an associated production, which allows over 150 students to perform on our stage in a given year. Uh, there is time during the class to study acting, verbal, nonverbal expression, and other skills that can be used in the production. Uh, in our drama one class, uh, there are most of the work is done during the school day in those classes. Uh, there's a handful of after school rehearsals uh, right before the production, but most of it's done during class. This is really good for athletes and uh, students who are involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. Um, you can see the sequence of our drama courses in our program of studies. Uh, but like I said, as a freshman, you're eligible for drama one. In addition, all students at Princeton High School are eligible to audition for the fall play or the spring musical or both. And it's a great way, but a great way to prepare for those auditions is to take one of our theater classes. Our dance class is a really exciting class. It is a full year course. Uh, there is no audition required for this, and there is also not a public performance uh, for this particular class. Uh, they'll study various dances from ballroom to Latin to contemporary dances, um, and there are also opportunities for students uh, to choreograph. You can repeat this class from year to year because the repertoire changes uh, from year to year, just like our music program. So I would invite you to come out and see one of our concerts, our plays, attend an art show. It'll really help you to start to make these choices. I welcome you to Princeton High School and look forward to seeing you and continue, uh, continue to watch your growth over the next couple of years. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Donovan for a conversation about athletics. Thank you. So before I shapeshift another Harry Potter reference to Brian Kaminsky, I apologize to the parents who are from Cranberry who heard me tell this story last week. But we were listening about the band, and I thought about this story, and I think it's really, really cool. So who knows the band Blues Traveler? Just quick, raise your hands. I feel like more people should know who that band is, but okay. All right, so in 1996, when I graduated high school, Blues Traveler was the coolest band. Mr. Burr would want you to believe it was the Black Crows, but it wasn't. It was definitely Blues Traveler. The lead singer of Blues Traveler's name is John Popper. What people don't know is that John Popper is from Princeton High School. He played with the studio band here at Princeton High School, and over winter break, he posted a picture from like 1984 where he was on the stage with his harmonica. So here he is, like 35 years later, remembering about his incredible experience as a musician at Princeton High School. And I just think that's a really cool testament to what an amazing school this is and what an amazing program that is. So I just wanted to give a shout out to that program. Okay, um, now I'm going to be Brian Kaminsky, athletic information. So the most important thing to know is that every student at Princeton, um, both at middle school and at high school, have Princeton um, email addresses. And so this is really, really crucial. You want to make sure that your student or child knows how to log in to their Princeton email address. Mr. Kaminsky sends blasts of emails which has all the information about registering for sports, when your child needs an impact test, when those tests are available, what upcoming sports are coming, all through that email address. So it's really, really important. The other piece he wanted me to highlight is that coaches are really only supposed to interact with students through that email address. So it's really crucial that your child, so you have a couple of months to make sure that your child is registered, they know how to access that email address, but that's something that's very important. Now for parents, the website has an incredible amount of information available to you. Again, when impact tests are, what's a fall sport, what's a spring sport, what do you need to register, when, by, um, and all the forms are available online to you. So it's really important that you also make sure that your email is up to date in our systems. I know myself, I received the blast from Mr. DeVinci that will say to me, hey, JW community, this upcoming sport is starting in a few weeks, make sure that you have all your paperwork in. So it will really help you keep on top of all of those forms because with athletics there are a lot of forms. So that's the athletic piece. As far as PE, the only thing that you really need to know is that your child will be enrolled in a physical education and health class every year that they are in high school 
In ninth grade, it's PE9. In 10th grade, it is driver's education. I know that's terrifying. Your child will be driving in a couple years. Uh, in 11th grade, as, as seniors, they take senior health. Um, but again, so that's really all. There's not a lot of choice within physical education. Although, let's go back to science. There's a really cool science elective called Exercise Science that actually does kind of um, bridge that gap between physical education coursework and science coursework. So that's something that's kind of cool for the future. Okay. So eighth grade students, um, we already had our orientation at the various uh, middle schools, uh, which is a wonderful <coughs> opportunity to share this information directly with the students in school. Uh, you also have your dates where you will have an individual appointment with your school counselor. Uh, for Cranberry School, that is January 23rd. For Charter School, it's the 27th. And then JW, you should have received a sign-up genius where you signed up for a time either on January 28th, 30th, February 4th, or the 6th. So I always tell parents this because sometimes I think people get a little confused with the scheduling process. It doesn't matter if you register for courses on January 23rd or if you register for classes on February 6th. It's simply inputting those course requests. So it has no, uh, makes no difference in the ability to get into a class itself. Uh, course verification letters will go out in April. That's kind of an initial glance for you. So you can look and say, oh, you know what? We put down orchestra. I actually had meant band. I'm not sure why I put that. And then you can let your counselor know. And then again, we do a final course verification in June because we keep talking to you about how important it is with those placements. So after we receive those final placements and we make all our adjustments, we send you one more verification where it gives you the opportunity to review it with your child, look again at that time management tool that we will be providing you and make some final decisions before you go and enjoy your summer. So placement changes will be adjusted in a timely manner um, from when we receive them. So again, you get those June course verification and then final schedules are available to students at orientation. So I always tell the ninth grade students, if you have like an older sibling, that's the coolest day because you get your schedule like four hours before the rest of the school. And I don't know why that seems to make such a big deal, but it really does. Um, and the siblings will often try to come in here on orientation and say, oh, hey, you given my brother his schedule. Can I get mine too? And the answer is always no. Ninth grade, you get your schedules first. So make sure that you're reviewing the program of studies online. Come prepared with questions. I've thrown so much information out at you. That's why we're recording this event. It's why the PowerPoint will be available to you. Really look through it. Look through the uh, program of studies. And any questions that you have, you have that one-on-one -on -one time with your school counselor where you can ask those questions. And we want to develop that relationship. Remember, they're your multi-tool. So as you go from now, really until the day, I always say after graduation, uh, that's somebody you want to develop a relationship with and really build that um, questions and answers and having that conversation. Remind your child that they are invited to their registration appointment. Often they're like, oh no, that's what mom and dad are doing. I'm not going to that. No, you really want to be there because you get to meet your school counselor. It's where you can ask some questions. If you're maybe a little confused about what a class means or what's, you know, whether, oh, I'm not great at math, but would I be okay in this computer science principles class? Your counselor's a great person to ask. And you want to be part of this process. This is kind of your first step at high school where you get to, remember what I said, be responsible. And so you get to take responsibility responsibility for your academics and choosing your own courses. And then there's more information to come about exciting events, but something that I would really encourage you is, again, have a look. If you love lacrosse, come out to a lacrosse game this spring. If you love um, drama, uh, Freaky Friday, I believe, is the spring musical. Come and enjoy a play here at Princeton High School. It's a great way for you to build your community already, because really, after today, you're already progressing, even though Mr. Burt doesn't want you to, to becoming a Princeton High School student. So right now, the tentative date for the new student orientation is August 27th. We're just pending the final school calendar. So if that date changes, we will send out a blast email and it will be posted on our website. But right now, our tentative date is August 27th. Um, going back to kind of sports and that piece, uh, when you're, if you're playing a fall sport, usually those practices do start like the second week in August. So it's really important when you're thinking about your vacation schedules. And that's also the reason that we try to do it the third or fourth week of August. August, because our thought is that most students have returned home from like off, you know, wonderful life experiences over the summer and they're ready to be back and learning. 
So again, tonight is just one step, uh, a survey, an introduction of all the wonderful things at Princeton High School, but it's not the last one. You'll have lots of interactions um, with the team at Princeton High School, and so we're just super excited for you to join us. So for contacting, we have a lot of information on our website. The counselors just did a photo shoot. We look awesome. So you can feel free to go on there, have a look who your school counselor will be. It also has all the contact information for myself, for all the supervisors, for um, building administration. So if you have any questions or anything like that, you can reach out to them. So thank you, and like I said, you're going to blink, and those hats will be thrown at the tower. So congratulations, and welcome to Princeton High School.